sense like a puzzle right take this and go back to the two fractions from this from which this was composed right and, and if that doesn't hook you I don't know what will okay so that's called what that that process is called partial fraction decomposition so we're gonna, that's gonna be the entire goal of today is to take a big fraction and separate it into little fractions right? oh, okay. and when you're done with any one of these problems today you'll know you're right because you can add them back together and see whether you got the answer, right? You know, see if it actually works. All right, so this is the, this is the kind of thing that we'll get when we're done today. I'll, I'll, you'll start with the left-hand side. You'll start with the left-hand side, and you'll create for us the right-hand side, splitting it into fractions. So what do you notice will definitely be a some elements of that. And in fact, already you're kind of thinking, I think I know where this is going to go a little bit. What, for example, must be true about the denominators? Yeah, when you see that. Okay. Um, forget. Yeah, it should be clear that the factorization of the denominator of your fraction you start with is of utmost importance, right? So hopefully you see that at least. But the claim that we're going to make today is that you should be able to split the fraction up. How, how much, how, how split up should it be able to, how, how far can you go? And the answer is here, although it's dense, dense in the way it's written. The answer is you should be able to write it in so that all the denominators are either linear factors or irreducible quadratic factors or powers of those things. So here we have an irreducible quadratic. Here we have a linear factor, and here we have a linear factor raised to a power, right? And you can check my work if you like. The problem going leftward is easy. The problem going rightward is the tricky part that we're going to figure out how to do today. I know you are. All right, are you prepared for this easy? Five-step process. Five-step process. All right, here it is. Here's the easy five-step process. First, if it's the, if the degree is higher on top or equal, I'm going to add or equal. I'm not sure why it doesn't say that here. Then do long division. We're not going to show you an example of that sit here, but in the homework tonight, you'll encounter that. One of them, I think, has that for you to do. So if it's the degree, you know that if the degree is equal or higher on top, then there is division to do. All right, supposing that that's out of the way, the next thing to do is what Jasmine said, and that's let's examine the factorization if it's not already been done for you with the denominator. So do that. So far, so good. Those things seem, seem like pretty basic first steps. And then things get a little messy. We need to write out all the denominators. For every linear factor, you're going to include that linear factor up to its multiplicity as a denominator. And on the top, you're going to put some constant which you have yet to know. Right? So these are just placeholders. Up on top, you're just putting some letter of your choice. Any letter you like this as a placeholder. You know it's going to be like some number, though. So if a, 
if one of the factors in your denominator is say like x plus 2 cubed, say that's in the factorization of your original thing. Well then in your fraction decomposition, you need to have the following denominators, x plus 3, x plus 3 squared, and x plus 3 cubed are going to appear as denominators for you. And on top of each of those, x plus 2 cubed, whatever. Um, on top of each of those is going to be a constant. With a, uh, name it by a letter for now, of your choice. All right, and if that's, <laughs> bear with me on that. We're going to do the same thing, bear with me here, for all of the irreducible quadratics, too. If there are any. So if there are irre irreducible quadratics, that is, say you have x squared plus 2 cubed in the bottom. I, I hope that doesn't happen to you, maybe, but it could, right? A six degree polynomial oh, um, right? X squared plus two cubed. Then the same thing would be true here. You'd need to include every one of those irreducible quadratics appearing up to whatever its multiplicity is. So x squared plus two would have to appear, x squared plus two squared would have to appear, and x squared plus two cubed would have to appear. Now unfortunately, because they're quadratics, we can't guarantee that the numerator will be a constant. The best we can assume about the numerator for each of these is that it will be uh, that it will be linear. So that's why you see up at the top. Again, don't be intimidated by all the subscripts here and everything. Just know that what we're looking at is something times x plus something for each of the numerators. Use whatever letters you like. And then, of course, the last task here, if you can swallow three and four, the last task is actually solving for the constants, uh -huh. right? Which will be done. So we'll start by just even understanding. We're going to spend uh, two problems just right now. Understanding what I even said on yeah. three and four. Right? Like three and four is like, wait, what? Yeah. Yeah. what? Yeah. Right? That's, that's messy. So let's see if we can wrap our minds around even what it says on three and four. Um, the people at home are not going to like this, but that's okay. I'm going to write this problem on the board. Yeah. All right, so we have two problems on this next slide. I'm going to go back to this one here. Um, we're going to do, I'm going to do A from the, the slide I just showed you over on the board so that we can see this next to it here, okay? So we can kind of try and make sure. Am I really doing what this says? And then I have, and, and the instructions on the slide that I just showed you for only two seconds there say just don't solve for the constants, but just write the form of the partial fraction decomposition. Let's get it started, right? So that's what we're going to do here. Um, so see if you can interpret. Now, notice. Number one and two are not at play here. You're welcome, right? The numerator has a degree lower than the denominator, so there's no division to pick up here. And the denominator has already been factored for you. That would be terrible if it hadn't been six degree polynomial. All right, so now we're ready. We're actually ready to do step three and four here in conjunction. Uh, Julia, any questions? Yeah. Here? Oh, this here is a three. Is that what you want? It's a three. Is that okay? Is that better? All right. So give me, if you can, uh, a, a denominator that you think should appear over on this. Give me any denominator you think should appear over here in the, the breakdown. Give me one. X cubed will be one of them. That's true. X will also be one. Give me another one. X squared will be one. This is that idea that X is a linear factor, and every version of that factor will appear all the way up to its multiplicity. So that's us doing what we just said there, obeying this instruction. Give me another one that appears. What did you say? X plus three and X squared plus one. And if X squared plus one was raised to some power, we would repeat that too. All right, so there's the, those are the denominators. So let's, let's go through and say so what the numerators are. Let's call this one what? what give me a letter. A. How about A? This one? B. How about B? C. No, I don't like it, sorry. C, how about? Uh, over here, D, how about? G. And over here? E, L, 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 R, R. Yeah, I like E, but like R better. you can use whatever want you want on your notes, okay? Um, but it's not just going to be E if you're listening carefully. It's going to be E. X plus F. 
All right, and the reason that we have to say that is this is all kind of a worst case scenario here. Why, let's, let's reverse, flip the question. I hear people saying like, why can't we guarantee that it's constant? And I guess my question for you would be, well, forget about that question for a second. My question for you would be, why isn't this linear? Explain. If it were linear, what, we, what could you do? You could do more division, right? So you always are gonna be able to have a worst case scenario where your numerator has a degree one lower than the denominator. So that's why over here we can, the best we can guarantee is that it's quadratic. It might be linear up top. It might be that E is zero, that's true too. But we don't know. We don't know. So it, the worst it could be is, is quadratic. Um, I hear some people saying too, like why do we need all these things? Anyone have that question? Or am I fabricating that? Maybe you all see it, okay. You have that question? Yeah. All right, so I mean, like, let's say you just said, like, why can't we just do x cubed? Well, then what's the best we can guarantee in the numerator? That it'd be what? One degree lower. How about the best we could, the best we could um, have in the numerator is that it's quadratic, right? But if it's quadratic over x cubed, these are the same thing, aren't they? Isn't ax squared over x cubed? A over x cubed. Isn't B x over x cubed? B over x squared? Oh. What? And isn't C over x cubed what we see up there? I'm just saying that like, you can always go here oh instead of here, right? It's all I'm saying, right? So that's why, if you can just trust me on what's up there, that I'll yes, trust. yes you can do this. Yes you can do it. That'll always happen, okay? All right, let's do the same thing to B. So A is the one I just did on the board. Sorry, people at home. B, though, let's do right now. Again, now don't solve for the constants. Just set it up as best you can. Yeah, do B, do B now. Yeah. All right, give me some denominators here. X squared. X squared is not one of them, sorry. It's not, wait. X squared minus X what? X plus two is one of them, ding, ding, ding. X minus two is another one. What? You actually had to do a little tad, tad bit of factoring there. Give me another one. It's not your X squared. Is Antonio the only one that knows these? X squared plus three is one of them. That's an irreducible quadratic. Uh, and what else? X squared plus three squared. This is the, the thing we were talking about, where you have an irreducible quadratic appearing up to its multiplicity. Yeah. Yeah. So we were saying, if you if you don't believe me, let's just do it over x cubed then the best we can guarantee for the numerator is that it's quadratic. Oh, and notice that those are actually the same thing. If you can do this, then you can do this. Yeah. Always, it turns out that that's, I mean, I, that's not a proof, but I'm just showing that that, that is what can always happen. Up to that multiplicity. So this appears, x squared plus three appears twice in the factorization. So just like we were doing over there, we need to have it appear twice. So here we have A, B, here we have, yeah, C, X, plus D, oops, I went for lowercase, oops, all right. And then over here, E, X, plus F or something, okay? So over every irreducible quadratic or power of that, you need a linear. Okay. Absolutely. Now we need to turn our attention to actually solving for the constant. So that's the next goal. First, no, no, you go ahead. This is guess. You probably have the same question. Go ahead. I don't quite understand how you found the numbers. I get how you found the denominators, but I'm still kind of positive about 
The numerators we haven't. Oh, you mean like y linear sometimes? If it's a if it's a linear thing on the bottom or some power of linear, it gets a constant. And if it's has a if it has an edge, it's automatically. No, no. If it's got a constant, if it's if it's um, if it's got a power, if it's a power of a linear thing like x, this is not an irreducible quadratic. X squared is not an irreducible quadratic, right? This is a linear term squared. Okay. And then, but x squared plus 3 is an irreducible Oh, okay. Right. x squared plus 3 is an so irreducible only quadratic. Only it has complex roots. Only irreducible quadratics get um, mx plus 3. Right. So only irreducible three. quadratics get to something linear on top. All right. We got to solve for some constants. Listen, guys. All right. The challenge on this one is going to be solving for the constants. The challenge is not going to be setting it up, in fact, right? You, I think you can see already how this is going to go. How do we. How's this setup going to work here? <laughs> yeah, x minus 5 and x plus 3 are the denominators. And on top of those go what? Yeah, how about an a and a b or something? Or whatever letters you like, OK? So now the question is, if we stare at this for a second, like how, wh what have we done here? And what can we do? And, and what lines of attack can we even take? Um, the, the first thing to notice maybe is that the thing we have is an identity. It's a statement that's true for all x. You plug in like x equals 10, guess what you get on both sides. You get a statement that is true that involves a and b. You want to plug in 100, you'll generate another true statement involving a and b. You with me? I will clean this statement up a little bit. I'm going to multiply by x minus 5 and x plus 3 on both sides all the way through every term. And what that gets me over here is simply 5x minus 1. And over here, that gets me a times x plus 3 plus b times x minus 5. So it's a little cleaner. It's a little cleaner now. Again, let's just say it again. This is a true statement. It's an identity. It's true for every x value. And you can generate as many true statements with this as you like. Plug in 10, you'll get a statement involving a and b. Plug in 100, plug in any number you like for x. Is there any particular number for x that you might like to plug in? Nine. Well, I haven't heard a. I haven't heard my favorite choice. Yet. Seven. Seven. Zero. No. Two. Seven. Six. Negative three. Oh, negative three sounds good to me. I like that. All right, just for fun, let x be negative three. When you do, what do you get on the left side first? Negative 15 minus 1 is negative 16. And on the right, what do we get if x is negative 3? Well, 0 here. Negative 8a. Excuse me, negative 8b. If, if you happen to let x equal negative 3, then this equation, which looked messy a second ago, reduces to just this. And b is then 2. And do you want to make another slick choice of x, just for fun? Ah, you're getting the hang of this. OK. On the left, that gives you what? 24 is what the left side gives. And on the right side, that gives, this goes away, yeah, 8a. So a must be 3. So we're done. A is 3 over x minus 5. It's easy to check your answer. How would you check your answer over x plus 3? Yeah, actually do the warm up again, right? Just add the right two expressions you think are the answer together and see if you get the left side. You like it? You love it. I know, I can tell. I can see that. Um, well, let's not get there. OK, here we go. Let's do another one. Well, they get more complicated at the point. The, the, method, the method we just did um, is sometimes called the annihilator method. OK. Can you see why? <laughs> Knock one of these guys out. OK. Let's do one that's slightly more complicated. Still not too bad, though. All right, you can maybe see why this is a little dicier. Come again? You need me to go back for a second, Jasmine? You're processing. Let's all, let's all breathe for a second. 
Yeah, you might think the same thing. Why don't you have that question about x, x squared and x cubed there? Well, the same thing, actually. The same reasoning applies to your reason for that. Is the, like, you, could have, you could have assumed it was an irreducible quadratic squared on the bottom, and then what would you have on top of cubic, right? But I promise that that can be broken down into, in the same way that we just showed you there, that can be broken into one that's just so that you reduce the quadratic, not raised to the power, and you reduce the quadratic squared, both the way yeah. That isn't something I proved today, though, so you're right to like question me. All right, Jasmine's done, right? Okay, shh. Back to the denominator for me, please, go. What do you get? Oh, I see. It's x times x an irreducible quadratic, friends, right? Oh my god, yeah! All right, so what do we have? A over x plus b over x squared plus 4. Oh, wait, it's bx plus c. Oh. Oh. Let's multiply through by x and x squared plus 4. Those are the clear denominators. Over here, of course, we get the numerator. We killed the whole denominator. Here we get a times x squared plus 4. Here we get bx plus c times x. And at this point, we may have reached, we, we may have reached an impasse. I don't know. What, what, what do you do next? N just notice, for example, that it's, huh? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, Joe. Make, uh, yeah, something zero? Yeah, but you, you'd like, yeah, you plug that negative 2i in or, so, two I in or something, I guess, or you could do that. But I don't really want to do that, do you? Yeah, maybe there's an easier way. It, it, the point is, it's not, it doesn't seem like it's as quite as easy to do the annihilator method on this one like we did in the last one. As fun and as cute as that was. Um, you might be able to make some good choices of x, though, that, that yield a good set of values here. And you might be able to get one or two of the letters pretty easily. What's up? Zero. Yeah, zero is not bad, right? Right away you might be able to get A. You see it? So certainly you can still maybe hunt a little bit for those values. But let me show you a second method that will always work on every single one of these. It's called, well, I won't, tell you, I won't say what it's called yet. Um, I'm going to multiply, I'm going to multiply this out, which I think is a reasonable thing to, tr to think about doing on the right side. <coughs> Keep the left hand side where it is. And then on the right side, I'm going to collect like terms. Do you agree that a plus b is the coefficient on the quadratic term? C is the coefficient on the linear term? And 4a is the constant term? So I just rearrange the right hand side. And now it should be clear if really what we see here is a polynomial that's equal to the exact same polynomial, then what must A plus B be? I know. I know you guys are great audience. Thank you. Okay. Um, and C must be 7. And 4A must be negative 4. All right, so in general, at the end of one of these, after using this method, which is called, you're going to like the name of this, the method of corresponding coefficients. Okay. After this, the thing you get, listen up, the thing you get will always be a system of equations, right? Now, to be fair, and actually in your book, you'll see, if you look at it, um, they go into kind of some matrix algebra to, to help support this, this uh, demand. 
Um, but I don't think that's needed. You don't need to like, you're not gonna be, I mean, theoretically you could be, if someone was mean, they'd give you a problem that had like 10 constants to solve for, and then maybe you would want like the help of a computer or something, right? But like generally it's gonna feel like this, and there's no, reaching for very, very heavy machinery here seems like a little bit much. So, in fact, C is already there for us. A is about to be here for us. And B is six, right? All right, so going back up to the top, well, A is negative one. Yeah. All right, so what do we get? A is negative one over X plus six X plus seven over X squared plus four. Amazing. All right, I think that's a good place to stop. Let me, um, let me tell you again, we're doing homework uh, seven tonight from the book, so for the fraction decomposition. And um, freshmen, please come see me. I have something.